are. Best of seven. On the bottom left side, a red Protoss resides. He is fighting for the Psystorm Gamers. He's from Denmark. It is Max Pax. Very friendly fella. Uh, top right side, the blue Terran fighting for... Which team is he on right now, actually? Oh dear, oh dear. I had so much time to prepare and look at me now. The fool I am. Ah. Uh. All right, Kaizi Gaming. He is the Blue Terran. Time. The Chinese best of the best. No player stronger in that entire scene. Pretty much for has been for a really long time. Oh, little weird blobs happening there. Let's see if we can reproduce that. I'm not sure if we want it to ha be there, but okay. Well, it's gone now. Regardless, yeah, so it's, it's a great thing for him, right? He's been the leader of the overall region for such an incredible time uh, in, in an area where, you know, with China, so many people are around, so many people like games, and there's a big scene for strategy games as well. Um, a while back, I... Ooh, wait, look at that, it's happening again. Interesting. Uh, a while back... You know, I did hear, maybe it was like a year and a half ago, that the Chinese scene was getting more and more intrigued by, you know, StarCraft 2 playing it a bit better and uh, getting more... Right, we have all these Chinese StarCraft teams right now as well. There's investing into StarCraft 2. So there's still an interest there, right? Yet, we, we don't have that many other players that are... Uh, on that global stage, and it could be because it's just more difficult for Chinese players to get proper practice, perhaps? Since their internet, you know, their servers are on the Chinese servers, they will have to find a workaround in order to play on the Korean servers, which is, well, I believe, you know, time also does. Right now he's in the, uh, in the Americas, but uh, that's what he normally would do. Talking a bit about that, uh, the game, <laughs> the actual game is all going on here. We have a Twilight Council from Max Pax. He sent out a first little zealot here, hoping to be annoying. But, well, actually, he might still be. I don't think he's going to get the delay on the... Oh, no, he might still. Yeah, look at that. He's going to get the delay on the command center. For how much, that is the question, of course. Looking like a pretty reasonable bit of uh, a delay here. Indeed, two SCVs go down with it as well. The double Rex opening with a factory right now. I'm going to try to get some sa uh, some safety out here in the help of a Hellion. The Depp barely escapes. Two Reapers and a Hellion. Probably not going to be too much of a hassle to deal with for Max Pax. Or at least it really shouldn't be. But looking at his base right now, he doesn't have a shield battery, he doesn't have a wall, he has the one low HP adept still, and not much else. I wasn't really anticipating this to happen to Max Pax here, but uh, alas, here we are now. Just trying to cut a couple too many corners, perhaps, trying to get the quickest Dark Templar you could imagine. Now, he might lose to two Reapers and a Marine at the four minute mark. That's a rough thing to deal with. Oh, well, he's, he's not out of it yet. Good broke micro there. Sending them up the ramp. Those that are hurt. To be fair, did time get a scout of the Dark Templars? No, he didn't. So, even though things might be not looking too great for Max Pax here, what is going on here? Interesting. Um, <laughs> what are those things? I don't remember those being there. Um, as I was saying. What was I saying? <laughs> These things really distract me. That's a nice catch. Pretty, uh, pretty deesh catch. Being able to grab a stalker for free. Right, the Dark Templar. Alright, so Max Pax may look like... E you know, took a bit of damage there. 
Maybe not entirely necessary. Oh, that's a fresh mule that just landed as the Dark Templar are coming in here. One scan is available, but the next one is still quite a ways off. One Dark Templar dies in the War Prism. That's a pretty big deal. The War Prism goes down, of course, as well. Missile turrets now trying to be constructed. The siege tank already gone. Now going to work onto the SCVs. Missile turret in the main base. Not going to have the luxury of a safety guard railing of SCVs. I think this might be it, guys. That one mule that we saw being dropped. That one right there. That little, that little fella. Well, we can't see him anymore. But that guy. That ruined the game for, <laughs> for time. Doesn't happen too often on this channel, I believe, that we don't have a single Korean in the show match. Usually the case, right? Max Pax is a special case, though. He is a fantastic player, and I'm pretty certain that he's found his way in this position because he uh, he's just a genuine nice guy, and, you know, people want him to have these opportunities. And he's put in, a, obviously, a heck of a lot of practice into the game of StarCraft 2. An insane amount of practice. Just like most of the StarCraft 2 pros, to be fair, but he's no exception to the rule. Looking at some probe magic here, trying to be as frustrating as possible. There uh, is a Reaper in production, so it's going to be a little bit longer before help arrives. The probe will... Yeah, I mean, it's it's just going to be safe now, right? It could have stayed for a couple more little zaps, but... You know, the longer you stay, the more likely it is the Reaper finds you. Or Marine, you know, if it was a Marine. Little chaos. Uh, yeah, gets one probe. The adept actually shaded away from here, which makes me a little bit curious as to why he is desperately needed. There is that the same one? No, that might be a different one. This one has been sent across the map. He's trying to do some harassment of his own. All right, got that one. Did, he, did something else die there? I don't... I don't think so. Nothing here, at least. He got the SCV. He got there in time. Delays the CC by a little bit. Is that CC delay so incredibly important because of his Dark Templars? Is that the entire thing? Because he left a Reaper on this probe line in order to delay this by, like... Five seconds? Six seconds? Could be a lot, you know, when concerning DTs. Definitely can be quite, uh, quite something. Marauder push, though, from time. We'll be attempting to breach the front. A couple of adapts won't be enough to hold this on their own, but maybe with a shield battery there. Let's see if that comes in in time. Yeah, the Marauders will have to back out while Prism is coming in. You know what? I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty sure this is the exact build that I did as a... <laughs> when I started playing StarCraft 2, and all I did was Dark Templars, <laughs> I just rushed them. No, no, no. Actually, that's a complete lie. I would never have made a, a second base. But <laughs> the rest of it is pretty close. Yeah, 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 and then you follow up with with uh, the blink, right? That's what I used to do, and then you, uh, you so you can pick off your opponent's observers, <laughs> which Terran don't have. Uh, but you know, I didn't know that at the time. They have ravens. Some people used to make ravens back then when Dark Templars were inbound, but that doesn't work. It takes way too long to make a raven, anyway. That's the first scan in the main base. More scans available this time around. Oh, Terran remembered to just not, well, that a bunch of uh, mules land just before the DT timing could arrive. Max Pax, nice pull away on that Dark Templar right there, survives the mine hit. Good play from time as well, I have to say, like, getting that uh, Dark Templar into the mine 
dragged. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Missile turrets coming up. Kind of have to, you know, after realizing there is a Dark Templar threat, you, you just need to have that stealth detection there. Or you're just not going to be able to do as much uh, muling as you'd like to. Little Arkham play here. Nice pull once again. And just have to recall. Down top of the Marines. The Arkham was already a little bit low, so in a bit of danger now. Very low HP. <laughs> Healing that shield back up. Kind of absorbing all the energy from the shield battery. But you know what? It's back. It's going to have most of its, uh, its shields regenerated there. And the rest can regenerate while flying back for more harassment. Colossus follow-up here from Max Pax. Next step. I was wondering if we're going to see a lot of the gateway army compositions as well from Max Pax. But so far... I mean, we've seen Dark Templar work one time, and we've seen Dark Templar not entirely work out uh, this time, but... You know, it's not a death sentence not having those Dark Templars work. It's it's definitely not a great thing, because it's a lot of money you invest, you know, trying to get those Dark Templars out. If they don't pay for themselves, then your, your opponent is just, you know, logically a little bit ahead, but... Um, it's not an unmanageable uh, unmanageable position for Max Pax at this stage. He's got his third base coming in. He just needs to survive against this attack fairly reasonably well. He's starting to get the army to do so. He's bringing over those stalkers as well. I think, I think he will have enough to hold here. He just needs a shield battery. He needs to get one or two more warping rounds. Another Colossi should be popping out pretty soon as well. It's starting to get a little bit dangerous here. Max Pax fighting far away from his shield batteries, but let's get a bit of an engagement before the siege tank sieges and the Wither Mines start singing. Second Colossus here now. All right, Wither Mine doesn't uh, connect onto something that looked too important. Maybe a singular zealot. And, ooh, that's a daring move. Time just hats on over into the main base. All the medifacs loaded up right there. Still a couple of Wither Mines out and about. So, got to be careful with just uh, moving your army over to your own base now, Max Pax. Great target firing there from that uh, Colossus. Let's see if he keeps on it. At least it looked... Maybe it was just lucky target firing, but it, you know... It was definitely hitting all the marines nicely in the center there, getting maximum AoE splash damage. Uh, would have been very fortunate if that was just uh, a lucky AI targeting, but maybe? Max Pax fully capable of doing something like that though, of course. I'm just not sure if he thought there was something else more important to do at the time. Oh, this could be bad for that War Prism. He flies in that Widow Mine and it's gone. Doesn't have that much HP left on the HP bar. I'm pretty sure the well, Vikings as much of a threat as that Widow Mine. Two Zealots do get warped in. It's already gonna be a cause for a few Marines and Marauders to make their way into this location, you know. Whatever you can do to uh, frustrate your opponents is usually a good thing. Haven't been delayed a little bit. Ooh, big Widow Mine drop. Uh, four probes. Another Widow Mine into the ma natural. Blink away. Oh, Blunk too soon. Might be a. Well, we're on the US East surface. I'm not sure if we can call that a server thing. It's just something that is still, you know. How many how meta uh, <laughs> no matter how many times we see the pros do it it's still something that uh, takes quite a bit of timing and when you're trying to do it as quickly as possible so you can get to the next thing it's uh, it's a very precise timing right that you're hitting the best way to do it is just the, the millisecond that widow mine starts the rocket 
uh, from its own body. That's when you wanna. That's when you wanna blink away and start doing something else. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the better you get, the closer you get to that edge, I suppose, and then the easier it will be to make those mistakes. Right, that could be a big disruptor. No, one B. No, no, this might be the end for Max Tech. Oh dear, oh dear. Lost quite a bit of army before. He is losing. Um, well, what is he losing? Actually, it was, I think it was just zealots walking in there. Maybe it's a dark templar or something going around. Still a couple of SUVs going down there. The fourth base for Max Pax is going to have to, to call it a day. And he warped in some other place, some other time again. Nice catch on those siege tanks, just as they were unsieged. The Stocks and Zealots do manage to get a reasonable trade there, but unfortunately, the Colossus protecting them from the bio does get picked off. Now Liberators joining in as well, starting to really make this quite a bit of pressure on the doorstep of Max Pax. And yeah, he's going to have to tap out. Time managed to keep that um, bit of momentum going from just the, the DTs not working out and... Well, there you go. Alright, best of seven. Both of them now. One to one. Here we go. Red Brothers, top left. Max Pax. Sidestorm Gaming's Danish Brothers player. Bottom right side, the Chinese uh, Terran in the blue for Kaizi Gaming. It is uh, time. Here we go. <laughs> This is what we like to see. Nexus first. Let's go. <laughs> is it gonna go Nexus first? No. <laughs> imagine though, imagine. Ah. Guess you wouldn't make a... You did already make a second pylon. Very interesting. Guess you have to, to keep probe production optimal, perhaps? Well, Maxpex knows this better than I do. I'm learning here. Two pylons. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> Probe on the run. It's gonna try to, you know, just be a nuisance once again. Second supply depot, a little bit early on here. As a factory will be produced. That factory full on envisioned though for Max Pack, so he knows there's a factory coming. Rather than something else, right? Could have just been a CC on the high ground also, but it's not as likely, right? Where are you supposed to put it? You can build it here, but that's a very long flight just so your opponent doesn't know you're making a command center. Seems a bit far fetched, doesn't it? So, yeah, we'll just, uh, I'll just stick with this. Is it going to be for Widowmind Drop or Hellions? Or nothing, none of the above. Keep our eyes peeled. Max Pax is starting to get a little bit uh, uppity. He's got that gateway far forwards after all, so his units are arriving a little bit earlier than they would normally. Two zealots, another stalker, a little ways off, but incoming nonetheless. Here he is, ready to once again disrupt the building of the command center. A cyclone might save the uh, safeguard the area quite easily once again, though, for the Terran. Could take a sec, of course, to kill all the gateway units, but it's, uh, it's a cyclone guarantee. Which means something if you have proper micro abilities. This is a fortunate catch. I expect doesn't want to let go of the proxy new gateway with the pylon here. Just to try and keep it alive. Does get the cyclone there. 
Little bit of a mess up there from time to time. Decides to commit for the pylon and he does manage to get rid of that. Another probe just appears quite quickly though. And that gateway will probably still finish up around the same time as that pylon. Another pylon is going to get invested here. As uh, Max Pax realizes this could be a tricky situation. The Stalker gets obliterated by a Cyclone right there. Um, Warpins. No, not going to be a thing here, is it? That gateway with the extra pylons there started to become quite the investment. A probe as well. We don't often get to see the gateway mid-transformation, but there you go, a little blob right there. Like to see it. First eyes on that gold base. Funny how he just kind of walked there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're probably here, aren't you? Yep, alright. Gold base has been taken. Now, at any point in time, you should try to go for a gateway army. This is probably the moment, right? When you have that gold base. How many patches are here, actually? You got four and you got four, eight. Is that a normal amount? It is. It's a really good gold base. Blink is being upgraded still, so these stalkers running towards time space probably won't be able to achieve too much. Considering there's two siege tanks already constructed, that is going to be quite an obstacle for Max Pax to overcome. Would like to see him try and just uh, take a more. Um, how do you say this? Containing stance towards time rather than try and be aggressive into this, right? Linking into the siege tanks line here. It's going to be a third siege tank pretty soon. Who knows where that's going to set up? Probably over here. This would be a pretty good place. No? Ooh, he's going to put it on the low ground. Right here. Mark my words. That's where it will be. Right here. Right here. Oh, it's over here. Of course. <laughs> of course. Ah, uh, I was a dislocation between uh, where my mouse was and where the stream thought my mouse was you see this is this is my way out of it all right anyway <laughs> anyway so yeah max pack's doing all of this though he's getting another base himself he's uh, upgrading he's getting a higher tier attack right the forge with the templar archives coming in charges coming in he's just sitting pretty he just needs to make sure that he's ready to receive whatever curveball is coming at him. What in the... I I oh! 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 Might be because I'm zoomed out. That might be the reason. These new maps don't like people being zoomed out, do they? Crazy. Anyway, this is... Quite an intense force being still produced, though, by Mr. Time. He's got himself five siege tanks, two marauders, and 30 marines. Two medivacs with this whole shebang now as well, ready to uh, ensure that stimming won't just ruin your army, mostly. And let the stalkers blink away for free. Good catch there with the siege tanks, resetting up before walking out with this, the marines. Realizing there's a high likelihood of Stalkers still being present. Now, as he's moving out, let's take a quick gander. The army supply is looking quite favorable here for time. Could still work out. Oh, that's SEVs. That is the SEVs being brought along. This is why we were not seeing a third command center being produced. Storm upgrade one second away. Just a mere seconds. There it is right now. Oh, another High Templar with still enough energy for Storm. Does get uh, obliterated right there by the Siege Tank Fire before it manages to produce any type of Storm. As Max Pax decides to just kind of head on out, out of the gold base. He's uh, fully in his right to do so. Probably the best uh, choice he can make in that situation. Definitely not in a place where he can fight this army straight up just quite yet. Needs a bit more energy on those High Templars. He's just warped in three more. Needs to avoid them getting picked off right now, of course. Zealots on the back of this army. As the Siege Tanks are unseaged. The 
do still take a bit of a battering as they try to escape. I Templar starting to get up towards that energy mark. There we go. 75 is what you need. Ooh, storms are going to have to be cast on top of the siege tanks here, unfortunately. Or face the consequences of just, the, well, tank shells hitting your head. And then no storms being produced whatsoever. So a little bit of a nasty situation still remains here. As those marines, the high DPS units that you would love to have that splash damage for, they're still here. Shooting away, Zealots, more of them being warped in. Could still be a positive outcome here for Mr. Max Bex. I think it will be. Army supply looking pretty solid for him now. Remember, he's been warping in units across the map as well. <laughs> so really nothing left for time there. Max Bex takes game number three. GG. Looking for something sneaky here. Looking for something. A little, little SEV just uh, waging a bat so far. Going in right now for an engineering bay block. Looks like it. There it is. Terran brothers and sisters rejoice. That is an engineering bay block. Max Bax doesn't know quite yet about it, which is going to be rough. He's going to have to make a zealot here quite quickly. And that's going to be a pretty much a full HP engineering bay block. Max Bax was not anticipating this. He did have his probe out on the low ground for a little while, trying to check for it, but that SCV came in a few seconds later than he had anticipated, so... Well, he had probably given up on the uh, on the aspects of an engineering bay even being produced there. <laughs> Silly him. Silly him. There sure is an engineering bay here now, so... Hey, it happens. It happens, man. Probes and SCVs all over the map. Factory coming up as well. Smack Specs kind of struggling here, of course, with that uh, engineering base still on his expansion, which he would like to take. Well, on the other side, we are seeing time, you know, not being all too greedy on his own expansion, going for the factory first. And making his command center even in his, uh, in his main base. So being super careful right now, playing against Max Specs. Max Specs. Uh, giving him good reason. <laughs> good reason to play that safe. There's a robo as well as a gateway now being warped in in the middle of the field. Not incredibly close to time space, but definitely not in <laughs> a safeguarded position for Max Bex. Uh, Yeah. Hmm. What's the plan there? Like, you know, you don't want to lose your robo. Your robo is not like a Stargate where it's like, oh, well, you know. It's not like I still wanted to make units out of the, this for the mid game. But you want to make those. Uh, you want to make the observers. You want to make the uh, colossi, or well, colossi or uh, disruptors at some point, I suppose. You don't have to go into carriers, but I feel like you do have to go into colossi disruptors at some point. You can go into storm first, clearly, but. For a player like, you know, of time's caliber, he's going to make Ghost. If he realizes you're just going down the track of Storm, he's going to make a few Ghosts. He's going to counter you, right? He's going to blanket you with his EMPs, and then, bam. Uh, you, you got nothing anymore. So you need a bit of both. You need that bit of both. Still producing, uh, we're still producing the probes, as well as we're still going with the warprism. So it's a bit of both worlds. So I'm truly not anticipating this, though. It seems as the sentries have clear entrance now to the main base. That is quite the conundrum. That I know feels absolutely abysmal. Stimpak gets cancelled. The combat shield is going to get cancelled. 
Oh, this is the worst way to lose a game, let me tell you. This feels awful. All right, the units do manage to get up there. The sentries are out of juice. No longer can make more force fields. But I feel like the damage has been dealt, man. That was that was brutal. More SCVs about to go down as well. The siege tank could go down if the stalkers really decide to go for it. Does not appear to be on Max Pack's mind at the time, though. Just wanting to get more SCVs killed off. Manages to pick off 13 in total. That's a good number. That is a really good number. Let's see what that cost him on the units lost tab. Not too, too much, you know. This is a trade I would take. Being a pro, or a, well, if I were a pro player, especially with this second base already or operating, you know. We haven't really skimped out on probe production. Um, this is a pretty good position. Now, is he going to be able to keep applying pressure here? I uh, I don't think so. He's going to need blink for that or something else, right? He could try to hallucinate a unit to absorb tank fire with and then just... Uh, hmm. Well, I guess not. I guess that is not the plan here. Is he looking for that siege tank? He might be. Just drop the units. There you go. Siege tank down. Pretty nice. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that is scary. Oh, that is scary. It's a good thing he killed Stim. It's a very good thing he killed Stim. <laughs> if that was Stim Pack, man. That would have been super dead. Was it a good thing to go for the Siege Tank there? Or do you think he should have gone for Stim Pack? Oh, oh, it's so scary. It's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> it has no HP anymore. Dark Shrine coming up. No real aspects just quite yet. Or for a third base from either of these players. Time might be trying to uh, put this one to a close. Wait a moment. This could just be already quite a decisive victory right there for Maxpex. Finding uh, Artaren here in the open fields once again with a siege tank unseaged. Berlingrad not helping out Artaren player here. As he perhaps was hoping for. SV's being pulled to the front. Alright, can he hold? Repass pretty good. There is a missile turret here. The Marines are doing good damage right now. More and more of those SFEs are going down. Now the DTs are discovered. A lot of Marines already killed by them. Those two Immortals still kicking as well. The real meaty boys of this composition that are going to chew through that bunker right there. The one self... Uh, well final salvation perhaps for the Terran is that Liberator coming in that might actually make Max Pax reconsider his calls of action here it could it very well could although with having two more gateways finish up uh, and still no aspects of a third base so you know what this is this is not over just quite yet this could keep going is neither of them really in a position to, well, push into one another here, I would say. Oh, he could try to, uh, he could try to elevate it into the main base, perhaps. I think that would be the better play. Liberator unseaged at the worst time at the, <laughs> oh man. That is always a, hor a horrible feeling. Um, might still be the end there. Not sure if that Liberator unseaging was the ticket, but it definitely didn't help. Anyway, regardless, Max Pax takes a third match, and that's going to put us on a 3-1. to one. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. What are we looking at? We are looking at a Protoss with a little probe running across the map. We're seeing him having the gateway on the low ground, so it's going to be very rough to get a sneaky... Uh, engineering bay block on the Nexus. Although apparently that doesn't bother Max Pax. He is immune to the engineering bay block. He doesn't care. He just keeps going. He tigers on through. 
He sees it as more fuel to his own fire. Time trying to get back a handle on this game, of course. Struggling. To be fair, in that one game he won, he did seem quite dominating. And I thought, you know what, here we go, guys. We're just going to go back and forth with this. I suppose we've only had two games in a row being won by Max Packs now, which is, you know, not that much of a statistical deviation from what I thought would happen, but, um, you know, you know, it looked pretty smooth. It looked pretty smooth. Improvising, coming in aggressively, that sentry, immortal play, I mean... We just don't get to see that enough anymore, right? It is such an incredibly strong strategy that has been around for a very long time. Previously mostly used against, um, against Zergs. But look at that, it works beautifully well against Terran also. If you come in early enough where they don't have that many medivacs, right? Or no medivacs at all, as time is doing with these build orders. And you're picking up on the fact that your opponent, right? Doesn't have those uh, medivacs at this time. Because he is going for the uh, the barracks, barracks factory most of the... Look at this, he is going again, you know, two barracks on the factory. It's delaying his starboard, so... It's a very, very small play from Max Bex, overall. You don't have your transport ships, why... <laughs> why not use something that just obliterates you if you don't have the transport ships? Great stuff. And you know what? He's getting a lot of value here with these two adapts and the zealot. This might be the most value he's gotten so far from just this initial three units. And he's been trying already. He's been on the grind with this initial three units every single game. An immense delay in that command center as the probes here for Max Packs have already been mining for quite a while, of course. Happy little probes, safe and secure in the Protoss city of Max Packs. Max Packstopia. Max Paxia. How would a city be called? Max Paxilus? Max Paxilus, yeah, sure. Max Paxterdam? <laughs> Max Paxterdam, yes. Here in Max Paxterdam, they are. Well, one, one, uh, one person just died, which uh, has never happened before, we promise. We promise that's the first casualty <laughs> of Max Paxterdam. Ah oh, well. Maybe more will follow. If it's up to time, he will definitely try to pick a couple more off, of course. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do, though, with his army composition, right? He hasn't really been playing... Uh, well, I say it's not... Easy, well, you know, he's not playing a... Harassment-style kind of play, right? He's not playing with Widowmind, he's not playing with the, uh, the Hellions, which I continuously thought he would bring into play since uh, seeing that. Well, we saw Widowmind's maybe a couple of games. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say lies here or uh, the wrong things overall, but, you know, straight off the bat, just off of the one base, we haven't really seen that much harassment action. He's just trying to build up an army and then make a big push happen, and sure, that is great, but... In a way, you're allowing the Protoss then to also kind of let him do his own thing. And apply the harassment onto you. And suddenly, you're the target of all that aggression, you know? You're the one having to run back and forth between your mineral lines, hoping you're going to catch your opponent in time. Refinery there might lose a factory too if he's not too careful. Another siege tank comes in. Time so fighting for his life here. After all, needs to find a way to cope with the situation. Luckily for him, Stimpak did finish up this time around, so we'll have that available. 
but still six SCVs. More than 10 worker deficit between the two. Luckily for him, he does play Terran, so he will have the mules. And kind of keep that income advantage at bay. Not let too many red hills pop up on that grav. Max Pack's doing a good job, though, of trying to uh, keep everything flowing in his own side. Max Pack's the damn growing in size, building more outhouses uh, around the city. Holiday homes for all the probes to enjoy. You know, it's very much like their old home, but this one faces in the other direction. You know, it's all mirrored. <laughs> You get to go from from uh, west to east and then west rather than from east to west and then east again. It's a big difference, right? For the life of a probe, it, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> hmm. Storm upgrade, full max specs here as well. Still liking what I'm seeing. He knows that time is going to have to do a two base push. I'm not sure if he's going to go all in again. It very well might be. Uh, we're keeping our eyes on the SCVs, whether or not they're going to start getting pulled. Well, he just grabbed a bunch of them. That may have just been a misclick though, right? He may have just grabbed a couple, tried to press BS for uh, the supply depot and then... If you misclick B and then just hit S, all the units you selected stop, right? So, that may have been the case. Let's hope it wasn't, but it very well may have been. Since we're not really seeing um, SCVs being pulled for the attack. Just a two base. We're not seeing a... Th Wait, are we? Okay, yeah, there it is. A third CC being constructed right now. As I was wondering, like, this would be the time, right? This is the most opportune time to try and make that happen. I thought he would place it on the location as well, but uh, luckily for him, he didn't. As Max Pax, the ever so curious zealot, will be uh, coming in to visit quite often into the Terran base, as we've seen a couple of times by now. Fourth base, full Max Pax already coming up, though, as well. Definitely keeping on the uh, upswing with the macro. The difference, you know, the graph does go quite heavily. It looks like it's going quite heavily into the advantage of max packs, but it is 250 in total. Well, it's going to 500 actually, more than 250. That is quite a bit. 500 more minerals uh, and gas per minute. You don't get them, you know, 500 separately more, you know, in, in each of those categories. But combined, 500 more currency <laughs> to do things with. It's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. It's like, what, three, four, yeah, three stalkers more a minute or something like that. Zealots on the right. Flank already set up. Stalkers at the front of the Terran base. Want to figure out whether or not another move out is incoming. We do have Ghost already available, a good choice, as there is, once again, the High Templar choice here. Oh, look at this. This is becoming more of a thing. Looks like someone's been watching Ryung play. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Just setting up a little clump of units, right? You know their stalk is there somewhere. You let them run all the way around the stalkers, and then just let them blink right on top of you. Such a cool play. If you haven't seen it already, man, that, that series between Ryung and... Uh, wait, is it a spoiler if I say who else it is? Just go watch the GSL, man, from yesterday. It was it was great. We don't mind. This may need a little bit more help. 
There's a siege tank coming up on the high ground. More zealots coming in over there. Not a Widowmine strikes. As the Brodos army actually finds an opportunity here to try and make something happen. The storms land. But that was maybe a little bit too... Uh, <laughs> Ambitious from Max Pax. Definitely a, a play there that required maybe a bit more precision with the execution. Besides Templars, they, they managed to land, but he kind of came in at, you know, in one side column rather than the spread out curvature of a, uh, or a concave uh, that we like to see. Right now, spreading out a little bit. Still having trouble though. A lot of zealots clumped up right there and having the siege tanks do a lot of uh, fire on them. Does manage to clean this up though. We'll have a further harassment continue. Medivax into the base, pick everything up. Another cluster of Terran units is coming in while this is happening, by the way. Oh, Colossi getting picked off. Another one almost suffers the same fate, but does manage to be pulled out of there in time. As yeah, talking about time, he, uh, yeah, that was looking pretty cool, man. That was looking pretty sick. He took out a base. He killed quite a big chunk of Brodos' army there. Um, and, well, he is losing the reinforcements in these Medivax right now. That is a bit unfortunate. But... You know, there should be there should be a moment here for time now where he does decide to take a fourth base. Right? This it feels like this should be uh that moment. He might just decide to float over his main base even, right? I don't think that would be too bad of an idea. There's not that many minerals left there. He needs minerals right now, quite desperately. As Max Pax, even though he lost the base, I, I guess time just didn't have enough as a backup to even you know, benefit from that situation. As now Max Pack still just has so much more. And we'll be able to just start slamming. Yeah, I mean, the work account is not that different, but time has been mining together with mules as well. So those bases, they mine out even quicker for time, right? So he only has a few mineral patches left here, and all the SCVs are trying to get that turn to mine on this. Um... Look at that, 28 out of 16 SCVs on that command center right there. That's the problem. That is the problem. If you had all those SCVs mining, you know, with another CC or just maybe floated over that. We would have had a lot more right now, I would say. And, well, instead, it's a GG. GG is called. Time has to tab out. To be fair, that was, that was already quite a... Uh, precarious, I want to say. It wasn't really precarious. 